Hello again, O oh lovely spectral audience, and welcome back to the Great Partition and Europa Universalis 4. I am still Paragon Saber, and, uh, well, Russia's going to eat a bunch of Poland, and Serbia is looking to be in pretty rough straits as well, so, uh, those look to be the main wars in Europe. Let's see how they go. Although we also see Austria fighting Spain. I think that one trumps them both. Oh my. So this war that uh, the war that Spain started against Catalonia also drew in Austria, and uh, Spain doing far better against Austria this time than they did during the League War. Uh, perhaps Austria is otherwise distracted. But yeah, they're uh, otherwise distracted in a lot of ways. They're also trying to help Poland. They're also fighting Prussia. Let's let's see what all of these are called. Second Prussian Conquest of Anhalt. And uh, the Russian War. But regardless, Spain has pieced out. Catalonia is gone. Valencia now taken, and uh, they have taken the Baleares as well. Notably, it looked like, well, for one, uh, Gascony is now in control of Toulouse itself. So uh, that's a big loss for the Toulousians. And uh, I think they might have forced Austria to give a province back to Toulouse. I'm not sure. Not going to... It, it does not appear that way, actually. I guess that's one uh, thing less thing for Austria to deal with, though. And Poland has attempted to strike back over here in Russian territory, although this is more Lubick. Uh, completely bypassing Moscow and instead going for random provinces in the middle of nowhere. Well, not the middle of nowhere. Uh, north of the Caspian, generally, I think these provinces belong to Nogai and such at the start of the game. Regardless, uh, you'd think that they might, things might be more effective for them if they were to rush Moscow itself. Only a level 3 fort, quite obsolete at this point in the game, but, uh... I believe the proper thing is to say, you do you, Lubick. I am really more interested, because uh, this is just a curb stomp, I I'm a tad more interested in this war between Prussia and Austria. Will the Space Marines triumph, or will we see the Emperor exercise his rapidly waning Imperial authority? Speaking of, looks like Austria is without an heir yet again. Yep, no legal heir for Joseph III von Habsburg, but he's only 19, and the Habsburgs have a way of uh, getting heirs when they need them. But were he to die in an accident today, Bavaria would actually become the emperor, so uh, that would be a bit of a turn. Uh, or did I see two votes for Brabant as well? I did. Yeah, Trier and Bohemia back backing Brabant, Cologne and Magdeburg backing Bavaria. So, uh, and Holland also made an elector at some point. Very nice. We have seen that the a couple of the original electors, including Mainz and, huh, Austria himself has become an uh, elector. I... I have no clue how that happened. <laughs> uh, I wasn't aware that the emperor could make himself an elector, and I don't recall the emperorship ever passing away from Austria. Maybe I missed that. Regardless, uh, Austria, until he gets an heir, will support Poland. Who is actually doing a pretty decent job of cleaning up his land, and Nitra coming in and stack wiping that little uh, army of Russia's there. So they're fighting back well enough. Uh, I still think Russia is going to win this rather handily. They have gone out here and done awful, awful things to that Lubeckian army. And by that, I mean they just scared them off to the east. <laughs> they are now in outright Siberian territory. Pretty sure all of these are three development. Eh, okay, Omsk is nine. But uh, a lot of these colonized by Russia as part of their eastward expansion, and uh, not exactly the greatest provinces up there in Siberia. Though, I mean, you gotta give props to uh, Sheridan or Troitsko-Pesharsk. 
uh, formerly the capital of Perm, that was developed up to 31 by him, despite being, I believe, Arctic. I didn't check. Yes, which ups the development cost by 50%, so, uh, well done by Perm, I suppose. Russia also launching an attack on Nitrin territory. Apparently uh, has some access from Odiev, which has allowed them to come in and attack from the south. But, uh, well, there's not that many... F okay, so they have gotten through the fort in Karalafold, which is one that Nitra would have rather defended. Oh, except they've gotten pieced out of the war. That didn't take all that long, did it? And now Poland is left to face the might of Russia with only Lubick. Nope. They are left to face the might of Russia alone. <laughs> Except they have Aust uh, Bavaria, Austria, and Wurzburg on their side. So yeah, alone. Except they're 67k from Austria. <laughs> You'd think I'd uh, stop forgetting these things eventually. And uh, Lubick's dis decision to take some of these uh, territories from Denmark appears to be backfiring a little bit. Because we have Danish separatists over here. Uh, Lund, or Shonen not exactly easy to get to if you're Lubick. Uh, they could, if they were able to pull their 32,000 troops out of the Siberian woods, they could uh, go to defend Schleswig, but uh, as it stands, those territories might just get rebelled back. And there's the peace. Um, I don't think I don't think Russia took anything. June of 1671, that might have been just war reps or something, because, yeah, only a six-year truce, and definitely no territory changing hands, so I guess they fought off Austria? <laughs> Maybe? Also, at some point, Eretna came in and took Sinope, so Kendar is gone, and Eretna has a very good province under their belt now. Not that Amasya is awful, but, I mean, 32 development is nothing to sneeze at. Having some tea there. Uh, excellent stuff made here uh, pretty close to my home. Cream Earl Grey. Makes me feel rather British. In the best way, of course. That said, I was looking at the tree. Ah, yeah. It produces naval supplies, so I guess as soon as the permanent, permanent navies event fires, uh, Sinope might become an even better province. Said things have mostly settled down by now. Lubick has gotten their army back into position, appears to have killed the rebels, but will they be able to actually get over here is the question. I mean, I'm sure they've got a navy, and, uh, you know, they have the means of getting over there, but sometimes the AI has been rather... Ha has made some questionable decisions with uh, transport fleets. You know, Spain fighting Kong and uh, deciding not to get an army down there until it was far too late. We'll take a glance at the New World. Inca, formed by Charca, if you recall, uh, has sustained some losses to Spain by virtue of being fed to Spanish Peru, but uh, they're still alive, so there's that. Also, Spain has colonized the Galapagos, so uh, there, there's something else. Great Britain actually didn't take any land from Muisca in that war they fought earlier. Uh, I rather expected them to maybe have them concede colonial Columbia or something, but uh, that has not happened, and British Columbia remains split by not only Muisca, but uh, also the Portuguese colonies down here. And Cartagena, a center of trade, so you'd think that the Brits might want that. The Caribbean has been fully divvied up between Spain and Britain. Definitely, uh, <laughs> were this to have been the scenario uh, going into the real day, real world, we definitely have some interesting divisions uh, when it came to, well, the modern day. The natives have still been mostly left alone. Uh, I think I saw one of them, uh, per Powhatan perhaps, just eaten by Abenaki. And I'm thinking the tribes have reformed by this point, so uh, 
They're actually catching up on tech. Iroquois at 17, but Abenaki at 19. That's only one behind. Huron at 18. I mean, last time we checked these guys, they were at 10. And that was not all that long ago. Uh, Miami at 16. They're pretty far behind. Creek at 18. Shoshone at 14. And then there's these rather less contacted guys over here that uh, might be in trouble. Like Chinook at 11. Uh, but Salish is at 19. Com uh, the Comanches are at 18. Haida at 16. So, yeah. Tech looking pretty decent for the uh, natives, for the most part. Though uh, Apache and P oh, Pueblo is still at Tech 9. Oh, that's rough. Maybe, uh, maybe Brittany, who has survived by being in the New World, uh, you know, maybe they can scooch on up there and take some land. I mean, they'd only have to colonize Jumano here, and they'd have that border with Pueblo. And then they could bring their uh, nine tech advantage to bear. <laughs> Regardless, colonization proceeding apace. I mean, it's not been that... Usually, I think you'd see a lot more colonization having occurred by this point, but really, it didn't kick off until the late 1500s. Uh, definitely a bit of a shout-out to Toulouse, though, who did colonize Brazil, or has a colonial nation in Brazil, and is the source of Florida. So, you know, good good for them. It's uh, a way to distinguish themselves, aside from being a released French miner, I suppose. Gascony appears to be at war again, this time with oh, Siena, Austria, Baden, Wurzburg, and Sardinia. Siena really wants Milan. I mean, it's been completely surrounded by Siena for a long time now. Uh, even when the city of Cremona was still around over here, so... Okay! Serbia's gone. Serbia has become Venice. Um... Rest in peace, Serbia. So, yeah, uh, another thing, well, you know, I, I... We did see... Serbia pretty heavily, uh, sieged down over here. They never had the biggest of armies. But while we weren't looking, they were utterly destroyed by Germion, Venice, perhaps even Albania. Uh, I don't know if Epirus or Maria were involved in that, but all of their heartland has really gone to Venice, although Raska has gone to the city of Visoki, and uh, Croatia got a couple provinces out of the deal as well. Bosnia was still around in just those two, but then, uh, then Germion swooped in and took pretty much all of Bulgaria, so they're looking quite well for somebody who was uh, released in a peace deal not all that long ago. Relatively, at least. The year is now 1668, and oh, Theodoro. Theodoro is about to get eaten by Russia, so I will hover over him, and that is also a way for Russia to attack Odiev without drawing in any of his strong allies, like Gascony without drawing in Gascony. <laughs> Honestly, Russia can probably attack anybody who he wants to at this point, but still, this is uh, going to be goodbye to Theodoro, and uh, it's been nice having him around as long as we have, but uh, all good things must come to an end. Kiva is still doing quite well for itself. They appear to have eaten the last remnant of Yarkand, though they still have a little bit of a Chagatai... Uh, well, they... they they exist in there, in, in the Levin Development Province. Chagatai trying to get some protection from Cardell. Usually that'd be the other way around. Cardell seeking protection, uh, maybe not from Chagatai, but maybe trying to protect against Chagatai. Regardless, that's, uh, I'm sure Kiva will be eating that here pretty soon. Uh, I see that the mandate is still at zero, which means it's still Yawn. Uh, so Kalka did not take the Mandate of Heaven from them. I mean, that would have been a very outlandish situation, but, uh, well, it, it didn't occur, and Jan's name looks awful. I'm gonna go ahead and, uh, get away from that. Madurai is jumping on Bahmanis again. Looks like the, uh, facade has cracked for them. They ate that coalition more earlier, and it has, uh, galvanized Madurai into action. Madurai has just become Vigianagar, basically and now trying to gobble up as much as they can from the failing Bahmani state. I'm not even seeing Bahmanis' army around. 
uh, unless they're fighting somebody else. They're at war with Madurai Ceylon, so yeah, I think they might have gotten stack wiped. That's a sad day for them, uh, especially for somebody who used to be a great power. Oman has nearly consolidated all of the Arabian Peninsula, uh, at least all that's not owned by Egypt or Ethiopia. Hejaz left with... Uh, they still have both the holy cities, but uh, only five provinces left for them, and they are guaranteed by Ethiopia, but Oman is still allied with Egypt. Yeah, so Oman can uh, definitely call in Egypt, as well as Kilwa, to make sure that that guarantee comes to naught. Kilwa has actually taken a significant bit of territory up here in the Horn from perhaps Ethiopia or perhaps from the uh, fading states of Marahan or Warsangali or who was, whoever was still alive over there. Great Britain has colonized the Comoros, not the greatest of provinces, but a stepping stone, though there aren't any other stones that they want to step on will have to be taken from Spain. Spain, who has still completely neglected any colonization in the rather rich Indonesian lands. Majapahit has almost knocked out Pasai. They've gotten him off of Sumatra at the very least. And uh, Pasai now stuck in just this little, uh, I think you could call this an isthmus almost. But uh, yep, Sumatra now completely under Majapahit. Maybe we'll see them able to form Malaya. That'd be interesting. I like their color too. Very nice purple. Brunei has been just kind of sitting here for a long time. They have not been colonizing at all. They have not taken exploration. Though, uh, oh, look at that. Tador has won the battle over the islands, at least, but Ternit, uh, Ternate has escaped to Manila, uh, Manila. So the war's not over, but, uh, you know, the rivalry, uh, at least over those islands, have, has been resolved. And Tador has also started colonizing south, including the Flores and Timor. All of those are pretty good provinces. I think they are at least 8 development, if not 10 or 11. Uh, and yay, we have Spaniards in Australia. Always good to see Australia getting colonized. Nothing on New Zealand yet, but I'm sure it'll follow. I mean, this land is fairly rich as well. 7 development there, 5, 8, another 8, 13... Another eight, nine, eleven. I mean, lots of natives there, but if you uh, prefer to use the coexistence policy, that's not really a problem. Also, I've noticed that as an observer, I apparently have ten prestige. That's interesting. <laughs> Didn't know that was a thing. So Albania has uh, their two other cores, but not Leger itself. Uh, and they have no allies, so I'm guessing the newly revitalized Venice might be wanting to eat that here pretty soon. Though, these uh, scattered states might want to watch out. Germion is looking quite strong. They could probably get in there and do some damage if they wanted to. Assuming nobody got protected. Uh, Croatia is protected by Great Britain, so that helps them out quite a bit. Venice is allied with Visoki and actually guaranteed by Germion, so that says something about where Germion wants to expand, I suppose. Epirus, though, uh, who did take Thessaly at some point, I think I mentioned that, uh, only allied with Crete. Maria has taken Athens from Achaea, and they are allied with Croatia and Aydin. And what about Crete? They're allied with Epirus and East Frisia, of all people. <laughs> That's, uh... Again, they just love to ally people down in the Balkan region. And yes, Theodoro is almost all dead. They've been reduced to only Azov. That's rough stuff for them in that war. Doesn't look like Odia have lost anything in the war, uh, but can't help but wonder how long it's going to be before Russia decides that that guarantee by Persia means nothing, and that all of this is rightful Russian clay. And hey, there's the war one of the wars I was looking for. Uh, Livonia is at war with the Livonian Order. But uh, they appear to have called Poland in, which it's got to be frustrating for them, because obviously Livonia wants all of the former Livonian Order's land, and uh, Poland wants Matau. Poland probably wants more than that. Yeah, Poland wants all three of these, and Ocel. So that... 
alliance might become rather strange should uh, Livonia decide to take these three provinces and uh, leave the Livonian order alive in spite of Poland. Who else is involved in this war? Sorry, I should click on Livonia instead. Uh, Brabant and Trier. So yes, Brabant has held on to that alliance with the Livonian Order, and now the Poles and the Livonians are coming. Also, Finland has taken Stockholm. And Aland. That, huh. Okay, then. You know, not a real nation, but uh, they own quite a bit of land for somebody who doesn't exist, right? Province number one, under their control. And you do you, Iceland. Uh, unfortunately, Iceland uh, stuck at Tech 15, probably having no great luck with institution spread. I mean, they have colonialism, and they have the printing press ticking up ever so slowly in Reykjavik, but uh, there are no centers of trade in Iceland, and I suppose they're not making quite enough money to uh, start building manufactories. I mean, they've gotten it up to uh, 14 development on the entire island. I really wish that uh, they'd have a plan in place for AI Iceland to take uh, exploration. Because it would make a lot of sense for them to rather to colonize, or rather recolonize, Greenland. Greenland. Uh, that's something else I'd like to see. I'd like to see some events where I think this should be localized to only if Norway colonizes Greenland. And only if they manage to do this before, say, 1500, or maybe even earlier, maybe like 1475, where they find some remnants of the, the former Norse Viking settlers there on Greenland and are able to assimilate them for a bit of a population boost. Uh, or maybe settler chance, or maybe both. Yeah, Because I think the last contact any Europeans had with the Norse uh, Greenland settlers was in early four, uh, the early 15th century. I think it was like 1409 or something. And, uh, I mean, it's possible that they could have had a few people still around by 1444 and just nobody was in contact with them. Uh, getting all this from uh, the book Collapse. I, I can't remember who the author's name is. I know Jared is one of, uh, one of his names, but I think that's his first name. Regardless, uh, th that'd be an event I'd love to see. I might say something along those lines in the uh, Paradox forums, if I remember and get around to it. That tangent aside, looks like uh, Prussia is bringing their army to bear against Augsburg. Going after Ingolstadt, Switzerland, and Mighty Mighty Ulm also trying to help them out there. I mean, for a three-province minor, Augsburg doesn't have a tiny army. They can raise 13k, it seems, and Ulm there to help out, too. Probably not going to do all that much against the old space marines. By the way, Prussia has done a great bit of consolidation here. Uh, I don't think their land is quite as rich as Austria's, to say nothing of not having France, but they've still done quite well for themselves. Brandenburg did, uh, did well in forming Prussia. And it appears that the Emperor has been changed. It is now Jin. Jin is the Emperor. Jan is no longer. So, I don't think Jin is in the greatest of positions to take advantage of the Mandate of Heaven. But they've wrested it once again from Jan, as well as the city of Beijing. Uh, now at 38 development. So, that's kind of a bit of a break again for Jan. Because whoever has the mandate, just the others have to wait for a few years until it ticks down and they start taking extra fire and shock damage, jump on them, beat their armies easily, and that just reinforces the, the fall of the mandate. Especially if they start, you know, losing stability or get devastation. I love this tea. It's now almost 1675, so, uh, we're well over halfway through this campaign, if you can call it a campaign. Looks like Russia's fighting Poland again. Uh, 
and Trier is helping quite a bit with uh, this war by Livonia, who has tried to defend Poland against Russia. Russia is, uh, well, they are the number one great power and they deserve it. <laughs> Though uh, they have not been able to embrace manufactories yet. Something they should get on. Delhi! Delhi is a great power. Welcome, Delhi. I uh, believe they have supplanted Poland as a great power and uh, are the seventh. Having taken a fair bit of Bahmani land, looks like they... Nah. Uh, they've done a decent bit of expansion up into the steppe as well that we've seen before. Bahmanis definitely uh, took the herd in that war against Madurai, I think. Madurai taking pretty much the entire line here of provinces that bordered them, as well as Shrikakulam, an eight development province with no other great identifying features that is completely cut off from Madurai. Good call, buddy. Good call. Bahman is now trying to deal with Gondwani separatists, but I don't even see... Uh, they still don't even have an army that I can see. Uh, I checked the ledger, but I think this really speaks for itself. It, it almost doesn't matter if they have an army. I mean, they're still on Tech 16, Dedeli's 18, and Madurai's 18, and Malwa's 18. Oh, there's their army. <laughs> and Marwar's 19. Uh, but yeah, they might siege down Marwar, but... They're going to get a large chunk of their land taken by anybody who wants a piece. They just kind of reached critical mass and are now imploding. And Ethiopia is under fire from Egypt yet again. This time it is the Omani conquest of Jazan. So Oman just outright going for Ethiopia's provinces here in the Arabian Peninsula. I, I hope they can form Arabia. I don't know what provinces are required for that. You know, it could very well be that they need provinces like Basra or even Baghdad. You know, I, I don't know if this is Arabia in the like Muslim, Muslim religion sense, in which it, it kind of seemed like a lot of this was considered... Or, Arab because of well it is still considered that way today I'm I'm digging myself into a hole aren't I basically I, I just I'm not sure if they're required provinces for uh, for formation of Arabia I mean I'm sure that Mecca uh, probably Medina you know obviously some of the ones that Oman already has are required but uh, they might need something from them uh, from Egypt as well cannot be sure This is a good, solid, strong Egypt, though. Uh, just another reminder that no one really needs. Uh, the Mamluks did start the game as the first great power. Uh, I thought they'd end up falling to Persia when they were doing their bigger bits of expansion, but uh, that has not been the case. And uh, Egypt has really held this border strong, uh, as well, when they got those provinces back from Syria. Uh, Egypt took good advantage of Persia attacking Syria earlier on in the campaign and uh, have have done well with their position. I mean, that alliance with Morocco has really served them well because, oh yeah, Morocco, another uh, power that's been knocked down, and Prussia has finally made it onto the great power list. Good for them. They've been working for that for a long time. Austria also up to number four. They've eclipsed Persia, who still has not embraced manufactories. But, yeah, I mean, Morocco's got well over 400 development, so, you know, and has an, a standing army right now at peace of 54,000. So that's a great boon to anybody who, uh, well, to any of... Rather, that's a great hindrance to anybody who would want to take land from Egypt. That's a better way of putting it. Toulouse is nearly full occupied by Gascony and Toulouse in Brazil. Looks like the colonies have had enough of being ruled by a faraway small overlord, and Gascony was more than happy to pounce and try to help them out. Are they fighting anybody else? Nitra and Silesia also involved in this war. Nitra seems to be allied with everybody. You know, maybe at different times, but... 
Right now, they're not even allied with Poland. That was kind of the big alliance in this region from earlier. But, uh, you know, right now it's Livonia, Toulouse, and Ulm. Uh, probably one of the weaker sets of allies they've had, but hey. And that would be the timer of the war. The war. The year is now 1677. Poland is trying to deal with Russia and possibly even Prussia as well. Still the target of a massive coalition. Just none of those quite uh, big enough to... Well, they just can't really oppose the Space Marines now, can they? Regardless, uh, I have been Paragon Saber. This has been The Great Partition. Thank you all for watching.